Uh, all right. Okay. Part of my computer is broken, so I don't know even what's happening, but to God be the glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, LOR Radio. Good morning, YouTube fam. Good morning. Sorry. Sorry for not looking you in the eye. Good morning, LOR Radio. Good morning, YouTube fam. Good morning, Facebook fam. Good morning, Reverend Lee. Good morning, Bishop Anderson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good night, good afternoon. Whatever time this message reaches you, good tomorrow for those who are already there. Blessings from God. Amen. This morning's message is entitled, do you see us, Bishop? You see, you, do you see it on Facebook? Okay, good. Okay. All right, hold on one second to see it. Is doing that feedback thing. Hold on one second. Just a minute. We're good now. Okay. To God be the glory. <laughs> oh, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this morning's message is entitled, Righteousness is not a preached theory. It's a lived experience. It's not a preached it's a lived experience. You know, some people don't think that we we live righteousness, Bishop. But, you know, as you've been teaching, hey, God doesn't share his glory, but the Bible says we go from glory to glory. You know, everything in the word of God. You know, it's amazing how we live defeated lives simply because we do not. We, we say we believe, but we don't. If we believe, we show God what we believe, believe it or not. The things we believe, we do. Whatever is it, the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, we speak, right? Out of our thoughts, we act, right? Bible, word, and psychologists will tell you as well. So guess what? We live what we believe. Huh? So we could say flowery words with our mouths, if we're not living that, it means that that's not what we believe, right? So, yeah. So, you know what? But listen, as children of God who have accepted Christ as our Savior, too many, God says, are living sin-conscious lives more than the righteousness conscious because of Jesus' life. You see, we, we, the Bible says what we are the righteousness of God in whom in Christ Yeshua. So are we living that the righteousness, conscious mind in Christ, or are we living sin conscious minds? You see, many of us speak with certainty that is seeped in fear. Thank you. Thank you. That is seeped in fear rather than the certainty seeped in the faith in God. Oh, Bishop, you ever listened to some of us as Christians speak? You would wonder, well, who is our God? Is it the devil or is it God? Because many give credit to the enemy of our souls more than we give credit to God. How is that? My Lord, be my, I'm so grateful for his mercy. You see, Many live a life confident of defeat rather than living an overcoming life, confident in our God, who is omniscient, knows everything, omnipotent, has all power, and omnipresent, is everywhere, can see everyone. Doesn't matter where our children are, where our spouses are, where our parents are, where our loved ones, family members are. He sees and knows where everyone is. Even when we don't know, some of us may not even know where we are, but God knows. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So let me ask you this question this morning, sons and daughters of God. Who has more power than God? Is there anyone or anything? No, none, not one, not one person. Hallelujah. And praise God for that. So. Who is God really to you? Who is he to you, right? You see, 
To live sin conscious is to give the enemy of our lives the power that he doesn't have. Why you keep doing that? Giving him power he doesn't have. I don't think you would give a thief the key to your house, the key to your car. Would you? Would you give a robber the key to your home? Huh? If you met a man or a woman and they told you up front, I'm going to break your heart in pieces, would you let them into your life? If they said, I'm going to wreak havoc in your life, you let me in, that's it. Oh, no. Uh, you would put up, the, no, in the name of Yeshua, if you're a Christian, you rebuke, right? Or you run. So why do we do this with the enemy of our souls? You see, to live righteousness conscious in Yeshua is to live God's goodness in the land of the living. To live sin conscious is to live defeated, self-loathing, Satan have control over your life. That's it. Because mm -hmm. you give him that power. You give him that right. You see, we ought to know with certainty that we are loved unconditionally by God. Too many of us as children of God are not aware of that. But we need to know that. Know that we're loved. Know that we were designed who we were designed to be because of whose we are. If have the acknowledgement, have the cognizant reasoning, I would say, right? To know who God, your heavenly Abba and creator is, your savior is. Because when you know that you know that you know, you will live life differently. A, a child who doesn't know that they're loved by their parent, they will do anything to get attention, even negative things. As a teacher, I've seen it. Those children who knew that they were loved by their parents, they were more well-behaved. Seriously. Not because, listen, there were influence around them to say, act like the fool, but they knew who they were. And so they wouldn't. You and I have got to know who we are and whose we are, more importantly, to whom we belong. And when we know that the God who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, loves us unconditionally. We live our lives differently. When we know that Christ Yeshua loves us unconditionally, we will live our lives differently. We will live our lives walking in him so we can walk upright. We won't be living sin-conscious, self-defeated lives sons and daughters of God. We are not the labels or the titles placed on us by the world, right? We are not our past failures. We're not our future successes. See, sometimes folks like to think the title I have is who I am until, God forbid, that title is stripped away and then who are you? Uh, we are neither the titles nor the labels placed upon us. Because you see, the world, even Christians, will, f oh, that, that person was a thief. That person was a liar. That person didn't change. And some have not taken off the, the cloak. Remember how blind Bartimaeus was given a new, right? He had take, he threw off his cloak of, 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 of being a beggar right? Throw off the cloak of being a liar, a thief, a fornicator, an adulterer, an evildoer. Huh? Throw it off. Once you've given your life to the Lord, be clothed in the righteousness of God in Christ. Hey, hallelujah. Glory. Hey, yes. Shua Mashiach. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord our God. God's love is unconditional. His righteousness is not a theory preached. It's an experience to be lived. You see, when we live in the unconditional love of God, we realize then that we're not what society says we are. We're not that sinner still. Uh, a lot of Christians are, oh, we're a sinner. Uh, God bless the sinner. Well, are you a sinner or are you saved? If you have been adopted by a person, are you adopted or are you just, oh, I'm just a beggar that they picked up off the street? Which are you? Saved, sanctified by the blood of Yeshua Mashiach or a sinner serving the enemy of your soul? Can be both. Sons and daughters of God cannot be both. You see, God doesn't hate us. When, and then he loves us when we're good. Bible says while we were yet in sin, uh, he loved us. Not the sin, sons and daughters of God, but us, the ones he created. So when we fail, He's not there hating us. And so we must stop ascribing that to folks that struggle, to folks that are going through the going through. Instead, as Yeshua said, love each other as I, that is him, Yeshua, has loved us. Because that's the only way we're going to love. Not with our love. Our love is fickle. Our love means nothing. We love you today. You say something bad about me. You, you're you not nice to me. You didn't smile with me. I don't love you anymore. What are you talking about? Uh, isn't that the kind of love that many of us love? Not the kind of enduring love that Yeshua talks about. Oh, if we were treated the way we treat God and others, and he said, Think about if God loved us the way we love. Now, seriously, just stop for a moment. I'm going to say nothing. You thought about it yet? If God loved you how you love others, the unlovable, those you think are not worthy, It makes me shudder. I don't, and I'm like, thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy every day, all day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why I have to strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to live how God wants me to live. Glory to God. You see, the thing is, God's love is constant, never changes. Thank God. In this world of fickleness, in this world of don't even know what to do anymore. Huh? What do you eat? Vegetables, stuff. Like you, you're like, oh, I'm a vegetarian. Listen, we live in a fallen world. We need to ask God what it is we eat, what we drink. Many of the lines, we, we're many of us are showering because there's lead in the water. We're showering. It's seeping through our skin. We're drinking water. We don't know where it came from. The, the earth has been polluted. But the Bible shows us. It says you will drink poison and it won't harm you. Hallelujah. And the word of God showed us. Remember in Elisha's case, when the people put the, and the Bible said it was poison in the pot. The prophet said, go get some, you know, Herbs, put it in there. Well, does our God have power, absolute power or not? We don't know what kind of air we're breathing, no matter where we go. Uh, only God. He covers us. He protects us. He doesn't want us to live fearful. 
He wants us to live having confidence, expectation that the God to whom we belong, he takes care of his loved ones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You see, his arms are outstretched at all times when we're worshiping him and when we're not. While we're running, our feet running to do some things that we ought not to be doing. His arms are there saying, come back, baby, come back, repent, turn from the evil of your doing and come to me. You know, my kids will tell you, I told my children, I said, I want to listen. Don't think you could ever do anything you can't say to me. I've told them that. I said, come to me. I said, I'm not promising you you're not going to be punished, right? If, if you need to be disciplined, I'm going to do it. That's just it. I have to. Eh? It's my duty, right? But you won't get punished all the time. Because it's see, the thing is, we have this nature, as Paul said, sometimes we want to do good, but we don't do it. Eh? And the battle rages within us. So I've said that. I said, however, if you don't think you can come to me, you make sure you go to God. I don't care what it is that you do. You say, daddy, here I am. Help me. Ask them. Because when I was growing up, ostracize you. If you got pregnant, you did something wrong, uh, you were cast aside. I was like, whoa, what? Uh-uh. But I know I could go to God. It didn't matter what I did. I could go and I'm saying, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. I need you to help me not to ever do that again. Right. Basically, we should do that first. However, the human nature, you know how that is? However, we can go to God at all times. Because his arms are outstretched and he's willing to forgive. And he's willing to teach us. His Holy Spirit will guide us. Because God, Yeshua, he intercedes and pleads for us daily. Glory to God. You see, sin consciousness, though, forces us to accept the world's definition of our... Um, sorry, hold on one second. Someone's contacting me. Sorry. Hallelujah. Um, Reverend Lee, do me a favor. Send the yeah. link to Donet for me, please. Okay, Thank I'll you. send it now. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sin consciousness forces us to accept the world's definition of our world. It forces us to accept the world's definition of our parents, right? It forces us to accept whether we are successful or not, or we're approved or not. But can I ask you a, a question? Bishop, Rev, sons and daughters of God, what is the barometer or the measuring stick that the world is using to define us? What is it? You see, it is fickle at its best. Uh, because guess what? It measures those who are considered to be unlovable, poor, uneducated. It's harsh. The measurement is harsh. Uh, the reward is harsh punishment. Isn't it? That's how it is with the world. While those who are wealthy those who are in popular social standing, those who are considered the la creme, whenever they do a crime, what happens? They get a slap on the wrist. Oh, naughty boy. You naughty girl. Oh, oh I'll put an ankle bracelet. You stay at home and live in the wealth of your luxury for the crime that you, the atrocious crime you committed against others the murder see they like to say words like oh they unalived but no the murder 
That's what God would call it. Huh? That you committed. Shouldn't you be punished for it? In the word, yes. Society says, if you're beautiful and you're this and you're that, no, we'll just slap you on the wrist and you go along your merry way, child. Everyone has a heaven to gain or a hell to shun. It wasn't made for you. Why are you choosing to go there? The only just tried and true measurement is defined by God's word, sons and daughters of God. His word convicts us when we're doing wrong. His word of the wrongs we do when we turn to him. His words save our lives from destruction. His words delivers us from all evil. His word help us to do good, to live right, to walk right. His word build us up. His word strengthens us to walk with God in Christ, Yeshua. You see, we need God's word. Because sin is not just our behavior, sons and daughters of God. Newsflash is not just our behavior. It is the brokenness of humanity. Look at the world today. It is tangible. It is visible. You see it. It's a rebellion against God. And it has an adverse effect on every part of our lives sons and daughters of God. To turn from God causes us to descend into the darkness of fear and destruction from which Christ alone, who is the light, the truth, and the way can deliver. Only he can save us from our sins. You see, sin, beloved, is destructive. Don't think it's something you can play with. You ever see a child playing with match and the parent says, you know, kids have burnt down their parents' house playing with matches. Didn't mean it. Didn't listen. But when the fire started, it got away. Because if there is dryness around, that's a message, sons and daughters of God. Don't be dry and dusty child of God. Bible. Mm. You get set on fire by sin, you go, you will burn. Mm -hmm. You'll feel the sting of sin. Mercy God. You see, it hardens heart and it separates us from God. It makes your heart apathetic towards God. Oh, I don't care. You no longer care about anything, including yourself. For the most part, people who say, well, I don't care about this person or that, you really don't care about yourself either. That's the truth of the matter. You know, we have got to stop being superficial people and look at what our actions are really yielding in, in our lives. My God. Good morning, Deaconess Chavez. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, sons and daughters of God, it separates us from God's purpose for our lives. It plunges us into chaos. It plunges us into confusion. And listen, sin is not insular. It is universal. It's not just self. It's whole communities. Listen, some... And we know when we read the word of God, we're blessed reading, speaking, hearing it. Hallelujah. Psalm 14 verses two through three tells us, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men. So just in case you're thinking, well, yeah, not me. Because, uh oh, like, you know, we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity for those who haven't yet accepted the Lord. Listen to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. 
So many people are not seeking God today, but now is the time. Seek him while you have the opportunity. Because when he said, son, go get my children, when Yeshua stands up, and we don't know. See, a year in our eyes, in God's eyes, is a thousand, well, a year is like a thousand years for God, right? So we don't know. When he says, son, go get my ch children, um, he that is in whatever state he is, that's what we're going to remain in. So help us, Lord, to be a prepared people to live our lives in you. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so continue reading the word. This word of God said, they're all gone aside. They're all together become filthy. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Mercy, mercy and mercy. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardoned there is multiplied for you and for me. There our burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Hallelujah. The work done at the cross of Calvary by Yeshua Mashiach, the Lord, our Savior himself. Hey, hallelujah. Baruch Hashem, hallelujah. Baruch Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, sin takes us so far into darkness that uh, let me tell you, only Yeshua, <laughs> God's plan of salvation can rescue us. Sin is not just an individual thing, sons and daughters of God, or a series of mistakes that we can correct. See, a lot of people like to say, well, sin is just, it's its just a mistake. It's just mistakes we made. So I, we can correct that. No, we have to be saved by Christ from sin. We can't help ourselves out of sin. It's not an individual thing. It's a force that fights against not just you, not just me, as individuals, you see, but our families, uh, our communities, our nations, and the world, whether we are on the continents or on the islands. Uh, so who can successfully battle and overcome sin? Can you? Can you? Not according to the word of God just in case you were going to answer. Oh yes, I can. If you didn't read the word, word says no. See, only Yeshua Christ alone can save us. It's only his blood that can atone for our sins. His blood that can pay for our sins. And he did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, the thing is, sin is not to be dwelled on. Because whatever consumes our thoughts is what the action we're going to put out there is what we're going to do. You ever think about it? You know, everything that comes into being sons and daughters, I want you to sit and think. Yeah, you know, listen, I want you to go back and watch this video. Share it with your friends, right? I'm going to upload, it's, it's on Facebook. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel, Flo Changajita. So if you have friends and family who are not on Facebook, they can get it there too. The thing is, listen to me carefully. Sons and daughters of God. Everything that comes into existence. Bishop. Before you had the daycare, before you bought the house, wasn't there a thought in your head? Rev, folks on here, before, before you cook the food, whatever you're making for breakfast, you think about it. Whatever you're cooking for dinner, you're thinking about it. Huh? Before we got the bananas at the store or the eggs, it was a thought. In someone's mind, let me raise some chickens that will lay eggs that I can sell to the people. Uh, the big companies, they think about this. I, I mean, now there is so much going into a lot of things. But you get the point. 
before they become reality. The clothing I'm wearing before I didn't make it, but it was a thought in someone's head to make this beautiful golden yellow and this beautiful yellow and white, uh, to put those patterns. And then I saw it and go, I had a thought of how it would be. Uh, and then when the Lord instructed me, that's what you wear, I put it on. Hallelujah. Our thoughts precedes our actions, sons and daughters of God. You think about it. When you're angry with people and you think angry thoughts towards them, the moment you see them, you want to curse them. Huh? If you change your thought pattern and you change the neural pathway in your brain, though, your whole body will bless you and thank you for it. And when you see the people, instead of cursing them, what the Bible says, Bless those who what? Do good to those who what? Go read the Beatitudes again, sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, we have to be aware of where our thoughts are dwelling. Are we, our thoughts dwelling on the power of the enemy of our souls? And by the way, it's you who are empowering him. Go read the word again and see what Yeshua did at the cross. Uh, so to live sin conscious lives is to live the things that we abhor, the things that we hate. Uh, you know, you ever heard some folks say, man, I, I, I can't get a break. There are folks who said they're bad lucky. What is bad luck? First, okay, that's a message for another day. But anyway, um, listen. You are thinking wrong thoughts for your life. Therefore, you're living it because you speak it. You thought it, you spoke it, you live it. What does the Bible say? Out of the abundance of our heart, the things we speak is what we what? get. Well, two different scriptures, but you know it. Power of life and death lies in the tongue. Those who love it eat the food thereof. Whatever you're speaking is what you're going to produce to eat. So change the thought pattern. Word of God tells us, think on the things that are lovely, pure, good, true, huh? righteous, holy. Yes. The world wants to say, oh, no, when you think on the things of heaven and you think on the, you know, there are people who hate happy people. There are people who hate. That is not of God. If you find yourself hating people who are happy, uh, think about it. Go back and say, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are people who hate seeing people smile. Wow. <laughs> you know, Jessica and I were talking and I said, Jess, <laughs> there were some people doing some evil stuff. I said, Jess, is it a strong, is it too strong to say I hate that person? Like, really, this guy was really doing some... She said, yes, Auntie Flo, you don't like them. I said, no, I get it. It's the hate, the demon that is causing them to do what they're doing right now. And we don't understand. Yeah, there, there's another lesson there. To God be the glory. Anyway, um, the thing is, you see, we can see the effects visually of sin. We see it in the conflicts. We see it in injustice. We see it in misogynies. We see it in ageism. We see it in selfishness. We see it in indifference to people's brokenness and insecurities. Listen, there are a lot of reality shows today that demonstrate the depravity of humanity. Oh, we know what kind of world we're living in. But thanks be to God for Yeshua Amashia. We can see the beauty of God in nature and in many others. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, we see people rejecting each other, insulting each other. And, and, and why? It's just plunging people into more brokenness. Why? All for money. Money, especially in this capitalistic country. Huh? People will do anything just because they're being paid for it. 
they will accept insults, being dejected and rejected when God said, no more are you rejected. Huh? Folks, do you know your worth? Who you are in Christ? Don't be deceived, sons and daughters of God. My God. Are you not feeling the sting of sin as yet? For you who have not given your life to the Lord? People will do anything for views on social media. People lie, create beautiful scenarios, share their lives. And I understand there are those who do it to feel better about themselves. But there are those who do it deceptively to pull you into their web of lies, which will strangle you, by the way. You know, I saw this video. There was a video, Bishop and, and Sons of Dolly. Listen, there was a guy. He considers himself a prankster. And he followed this guy around in a mall. He will lie to people, pretend to be security guard and say, oh, 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 you stole something. I saw you do it, you know, and have people shivering in fear, right? Why are we trying to have people live in fear? Anyway, he followed this guy around a mall and the guy looked like he really wasn't feeling well, like he wasn't having a good day. And the guy kept telling him, stop, stop, stop. And he's there following the guy and pushing the phone up in the guy's face. You know, I don't want to do that because I'm going to check, but right up in his face like this, right? And the guy was like, stop. Oh, guy. And the guy he was, you know, bullying essentially is a shorter guy. Well, the guy couldn't take it anymore. He pulled out a gun and he shot him. Well, praise God, he didn't die. He lived, right? And you would think he'd be grateful. Like, well, what? And he's just going to continue doing what he has to do. Now, shot was angry because the jury let the guy go because of, what was it? Some aggravated something, something. In other words, it was justified, the jury was saying, because he is he he caused it upon himself. Well, the father was angry with the jury and the guy who shot his son. I'm not saying he was right to shoot him, right? Because he could have called the police or something, I think. But anyway, the thing is, and the mother goes, Well, I support my son. Do you see the kind of deception that people are living? Why are they defending their son? Because he's making money with his videos that affords them to live a certain lifestyle. They're not willing to give that up. So you see, their son lived this time, but God forbid. What then? They don't think about it. Maybe invest the money that has already been made rather than spend it all. Because God forbid anything happens to him, guess what? That source of income is done, right? What are people thinking about today? The apathy, do you see the callousness? Do you see how folks are selfish and uncaring about others? The thing is, the apostle Paul truthfully said, we have become selfish and indifferent towards each other. He said that thousands of years ago, and it's true today. We're living it. The societal problems of pride, greed, violence, and spiritual are spiritual in nature, sons and daughters of God. The battle we're fighting, sons and daughters. We need the armor of God to stand and allow the lover of our souls, God himself, hold our peace and let him fight those battles. Because our own efforts cannot fix it. Only God can. We will never be our own saviors. Never. Never, ever. 
You see, it's time we stop fooling ourselves into thinking that we can fix ourselves with our own self-help and self-efforts. We need God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and the myriad of angels that he has. We need Yeshua. We have to let go of pride. It only leads to destruction. So when we think I can do it on my own, Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Difference, you see. I thank God for the grace, his grace, and for Yeshua, his son, our risen savior, because no amount of good behavior, no amount of religious observances can save us from the destruction caused by sin. Only Yeshua's saving blood, sons and daughters of God. A price had to be paid and none of us could pay it. Uh, none of us could buy God's gift of righteousness, God's gift of salvation. They are gifts given because of Yeshua Christ, our Lord and Savior. Romans 4, 1 through 3 and uh, verse 5, reading the Passion Translation, it says, let me use Abraham as an example. It is that humanly speaking, he was the founder of Judaism. What was his experience of being made right with God? Uh -huh. His good works of keeping the law? No. Mm -mm. For it was by the thing, for if it was by the things he did, he would have had something to boast about. What do you have to boast about? What do I have to boast about? But no one boasts before God, sons and daughters of God. Listen to what the scripture says, because Abraham believed God's word. His faith transferred God's righteousness into his account. It's our faith that transfers God's righteousness into our account, into your account, into my account. But no one earns God's righteousness. It can only be transferred when we no longer rely on our own works, but believe in the one who powerfully declares the ungodly to be righteous in his eyes. It is faith that transfers God's righteousness into your account and mine. Hallelujah, glory to God. Beloved, our standing before God is not based on what we did in the past or what we're struggling with now, but as our stand is based solely, solely, only on Yeshua's perfect sacrifice, we don't earn righteousness. It is paid for. God's grace affords us, sons and daughters of God, a whole new way of life given to us by the redemptive service of Yeshua Amashiach, our Lord and Savior. His grace and righteousness frees us from sin and gives us peace and a fresh start. Hallelujah. Fully forgiven. Fully loved. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord our God by God himself. God's grace teaches us how to live in difficult times as well as in good times. We ought to be thankful that these are the thoughts on which we should ruminate. Not the negative things that are happening, but on God's goodness, on his love, his grace and his mercy. Here's a secret I'm sharing with you, and I want you to pass it on to others. God loves you. He loves me. He loves our brothers and sisters, huh? not as slaves to sin for those who have given our lives to him, but as the sanctified, huh? given new lives and renewed purposes. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, Yeshua. You see, freely we have received, freely the love of God and his grace. So we need to freely extend those towards our families, our loved ones, people in the workplace, people we meet daily. Remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lottie read this this morning on the prayer line. I shared that this morning. 
we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. See, whenever you find yourself struggling with weakness, remember, we are dead to sin in Christ. So actively choose to return from the world's temptation uh, to the outstretched arms of our loving God to know that he will empower you to overcome and to resist the sins and the things that are of the world how the world is trying to lure you in yeah do, do you see when when a fisherman wants to catch a fish he lures them with the, with you know worms or now they have the little things they call flies right the world lures you in too the world tries to lure us in with a little of this and a little of that but baby the world cannot offer us what God has already provided for us, what Yeshua's payment already afforded. Eve was robbed of what she already had into, because she thought she was deceived into thinking, oh, she doesn't have it. So let, let her go get it. Huh? And the world does that today. Taking from you what you already have. Don't be deceived, my sons and daughters of God. You see, whenever we find ourselves struggling with weakness, we need to remember we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. We're dead to sin in Christ. Alive in Christ, Yeshua. Hallelujah, glory to God. We're not living by our past failures, sons and daughters of God our past weaknesses or our past. We need to live and move and be who we were designed to be in Christ Yeshua. We do this by surrendering our fleshly habits to him. Those things that we loved to do while we were in sin, surrender it. And surrendering to God doesn't mean that you're imprisoned. On the contrary, it means you're freed. Freed to live a new life. Freed to thrive. Finally. In sin, that's when we're in bondage. In sin, that's when we're not thriving. We're simply striving and surviving. Huh? In living righteously, God's word is here to show us it shows us the flaws in our lives, sons and daughters. Yet, it doesn't leave us with the flaws. It actually will correct it. It will cleanse it. It will heal it and empower us not to go back to our old ways of living the way a dog goes back to its vomit. You see, God's word empowers us to live freely in Christ. It is not about our perfection. It's not about yours or mine. It's about walking in the perfection of Yeshua Mashiach, our Lord and Savior, so that when God looks at us, is the accomplishment of his son. Because he alone, he makes us worthy. He makes us righteous. He makes us good, true, pure. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. I want you to know confidently who you are. You don't have to wonder if you're good enough. Yeshua makes you worthy. Just surrender to him and accept his righteousness. Walk in his righteousness, the one he affords you. We cannot earn God's love. It is freely given. Forgiveness is ours when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. God's love, his grace, his plan of salvation, his mercy through Yeshua is free for all to receive once you accept him. Uh, it's God through Yeshua that justifies us and makes us his righteousness. 
this changes our relationship with God, sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord our God and helps us not to live sin consciously, but bound children of God, but to live as freed children, knowing whose we are, knowing that we are the righteousness of God in Christ because of God's love for us and his grace and mercy towards us. I close with this. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. Live it. We are now made the righteousness of God. Live righteousness, mind, righteousness, conscious in Christ because of Christ, because none of us can do it on our own. It's a gift given. Live it, think it, speak it. Or I should say, think it, speak it, live it in Yeshua's mighty name. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for hearing this message. Share the message. Because folks need, if ever folks need to know that they are loved, that they have hope, it's today. Loved by God. Loved by his son. Loved by his spirit. The greatest love ever known. The greatest love that we can ever experience is the love of our triune God, God our heavenly Abba, Christ our Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, and heavenly bridegroom, and the Holy Spirit teacher, guide, who quickens our bodies and our minds, comforts us, and teaches us how to live. Know that you're blessed. Know that you're loved. Live it. Live differently today. In Yeshua's mighty day. Love y'all. Blessings. Have a blessed day. Thank y'all for tuning in. God be praised.